two uh, step naked raku. And what, what I mean by that is the raku technique has two different layers on it. There's two steps to the process. And the first layer is a, a thin layer of clay slip. And then the, after that's dry, probably tomorrow morning, we'll put uh, a layer of glaze over it, and then you can manipulate that layer. The glaze itself is what, allow, uh, by scratching through it, it allows carbon to go through to the clay body. The slip itself is only for of making the glaze come off after the raku fire. So the slip in this case doesn't do anything except let the glaze fall off after the raku fire. So what I'm doing is preparing this pot. I'm going to put tape or plastic to cover anything that that I want to eventually end up to be a black color. So to protect the bottom from glaze and slip, I'm going to uh, put the tape and plastic on, and then I will protect the inside of the pot, which I want to stay nice and black. So here we go. Because this happens to be 3M brand, and uh, you can get this online easily if you don't have this at your hardware store. But it is basically a drop cloth that has uh, tape already applied to it. And um, I used to use um, wax and latex to cover my pots where I wanted them to remain black and it would take hours and you'd have to make sure it was dry or it'd mess it up or you accidentally get a little bit of something in the, the, the wax or the latex, like a little bit of glaze or clay or something, and it would ruin the real nice black color. This, you don't have to worry about. This is really an easy, quick step. Really good protection on the pot. So I was painting the house, uh, repainting the house yet again. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> and um, this was laying around afterwards and I said, hmm, and uh, it really changed how much time it takes to get something uh, glazed. Okay, so on the bottom of the pot, I want to make sure that the, the glaze and or the slip doesn't leak through. So. I will I will take some some more tape and attach it on now one of the things that I like to do also while I'm doing this is set up a pull tab where I can find it even if it gets covered up with slip and glaze so I double over the tape right there so now there's no there's it's going to be extremely hard to get the contaminants, uh, you know, glaze or slip onto the part that I want to remain black. So that's got a good protection on it. And now, you know, it's with uh, wax or latex, I'd have to wait for an hour or two to make sure it's dry. Okay, for a asymmetrical top, um, if you had a uh, symmetrical top, you could take a balloon and blow it up and stick it in there and it will seal it off and you're good to go. In this case, this has an undulating rim on it, so I will use the tape on it. The, the uh, high quality painter's tape is, I find it necessary because if you use the regular old mas masking tape, you know, the old uh, beige stuff, it will jerk off, it'll pull off the sige, terra sigillata, that you've used on your pot. The pot here I'm working on, I put uh, the standard color terra sige all over it, and then I sprayed on with an airbrush, um, some of the 
sidge that was mixed with a tablespoon of a mason stain. Per cup. Per cup of sidge. So the standard thickness of terra sidge that you would use to apply to the pot, you would add one tablespoon of the mason stain. It isn't as shiny, and one of the things I will be doing is getting a rock tumbler and getting some of the uh, porcelain tumbling beads that are used in ball mills and ball milling the sidge so it's a little bit finer than this. Okay, so cut this. And in this case, instead of trimming it down, I want to make sure the inside of the pot is protected from drips. So I'll take this and just push it down into the pot so it'll pick up drips. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> so you can see if you're painting a doorway or something, you just tape this and then spread it out. And so even if you're using a roller, it'll put that's wood, you know, that's house repairs, not pottery. Okay, so I turned this over to Linda. You want this one done yeah, too? Yeah, I want to show okay. them that. Book. Okay, this is a real cool trick, and I cannot take responsibility for coming up with it, but I think it's really neat um, if you're pouring glazes over something. And um, here we go. Wow. So you don't want any glaze to get into the pot, but you don't mind pouring it so that you get it on the top of the pot here. And what you have to realize is overnight, or if you're going to be setting it overnight, you have to obviously use another one because the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll do that. It'll do that during the, the, during the night. But um, I think this is fun and it's worked for me. Especially like putting slip on, you just pour it and, and go. Okay, and so how do, you do this? So uh, in in this case, I I have made a batch that's uh, it's like two thousand grams of the dry clay. So you multiply it out. I think it's it comes out to what is it twelve hundred of the EP twelve hundred grams of EPK and eight hundred of the silica. So that ends up with a batch that's about a gallon and a half after you've got it finished up. So I'll, I'll take the dry clay and uh, put hot water on it and it helps the clay slake down. And I will mix that up and thin it out a bit and then run it through a series of screens to get the grog out of the clay because uh, in Naked Raku, if you leave all the grog in, it will put black dots everywhere there's a, a piece of grog. Uh, so you want to screen the grog out of the clay. So I, in this case, I started out with a 60 mesh, then went to an 80 mesh, and then a 100 mesh screen, you know, and then I ran it through the 100 mesh two or three times and uh, got most of the grog out. So uh, another thing that you'll want to do is if you've used a slip over time, Make sure you stir it up after 15, 20 minutes because uh, what will happen is when you get to the bottom of the bucket of slip, there may be some of the grog down there. So when you get to the last bit of it, you'll end up with all sorts of black specks all over your pots. But the terracidge doesn't want to stick on a burnished piece as well. And uh, some of the techniques that we're doing works better on the terracidge that hasn't been burnished or anything. And also, you just use a miracle fiber cloth uh, when you apply the terracidge. Just uh, get one of these cloths and you just buff it very quickly, and you're done. I, I will get the sidge on, on it, and I just, on the way to the electric kill, just wipe it down real quick, set it in, and it, it gives a very nice shot. So none of this carpal tunnel syndrome from sitting there and <laughs> wow, 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 for hours and breathing all that dust. And everything. It's been 20 hours, and it's time to 
get that out of the bucket. Now, apparently, I did not bring my siphon tube, and there's no siphon tube to be found, so I'm just going to pour it off, and um, that's not how I typically do it, but that's how we're going to do it today. The siphon tube, but this will work fine. Um, I will very, very carefully it, get in here and get the sieve out off the top. Uh, in this case, I don't have any water on the top, so I don't need to worry about decanting the water. If you were siphoning, I would siphon off. Uh, see, this is like a five-gallon uh, five bucket, and I had it pretty well about four, four and a half gallons of water. And this was 15 pounds of double X sagger. Make sure that when you're using the, the OM4 recipe uh, that you don't put 15 pounds. OM4 is a much finer clay, and it has a lot more sedge particles in it and so it'll be so thick it won't settle out well. If you're making a red art sedge you have to put in more poundage of red art because there's very few fine particles in it so it may be up to 20 pounds of dry clay to four gallons of water. Now the uh, recipe for the uh, OM4 is also in, in the notes there. I mean, it's not separate, but you have the choice of the double X or the OM4 and how much you need. And when you're making uh, OM4 sage, often you will end up with a kind of a brownish, foamy looking stuff on the top, and that is common to whatever is in OM4, so don't, don't panic. Have a cold one. <laughs> I got a question. Why do you dry out the clay first and then add water back into it? Because um, I need to weigh it. And I don't want the water weight. And okay. uh, the, the other thing is I want it to slake, fall apart okay. in the water. Okay. And it won't do that if it's wet trimmings and stuff like that. Okay. So, Thank you. Good question. There is no bad questions, folks. We might laugh at them. Yeah. <laughs> On the way home. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. Now, some, some people want to <coughs> use this stuff. All the plasticity is out of it. Um, it's dirt. Release it to the wild. You know, go pour it in the garden. Go do something, you know. There, you've gotten the good out of it. Now, you can get a little bit more sedge out of it by adding a little bit more water and, and letting it settle back out again. But, uh, you know, you've, uh, I only have maybe a gallon here. There's probably, if I was siphoning, I'd probably get another half a gallon out of it. A gallon and a half is about it. If you're siphoning, you start at the very surface and work your way down, work your way down until all of a sudden you see it's a lot thicker and then you stop. I just usually look over and when I see I've got a gallon to a gallon and a half, I quit. Well, Charlie, where do you get the siphon tubes? Oh, you just go down to a hardware store and get, you know, the quarter uh, or three-eighths inch clear tube that comes in a roll and you just get a six-foot piece. Another great one is you can order from the wine making, beer making catalogs. There's something called a, a well, it's the wine siphon. It has a little tip on the end where it come, the, the siphoning comes in over so it doesn't draw directly from the bottom. And, I, and it's on a hard plastic tube that you attach your siphon. Triangles or whatever. And you want to have that as your decoration on your pot. Um, I think I should use that as an example. Um, when it's still... Before you put the, the uh, slip on, you can go ahead and use that, and that will be um, totally keeping both slip and glaze off. So when you're ready to fire, um, you pull this off, and you have a, you're back to the, to the beginning of the, the layers. And then you can fire it that way and have a really dark 
um, success with it. Now you can see that putting the tape on this layer is not as successful <laughs> as putting it on the, on the pot. So that is one way you can decorate it. The other way is the next step after you have got this on and we are ready to pour glaze on it is you can take um, wax, liquid wax, and stamp designs on, um, and that will resist the glaze. So that's that's another decorating technique you can do. Um, the one that I do the most is this one. Uh, these are just wonderful, perfect things to use for carving through. The reason for that is it's wood, so it's not going to harm the, the um, terracinge surface. If you use a needle tool, you'll just scratch that surface all over. Mm -hmm. And there will be times when you're doing the, the design that you will go through the slip and the glaze. But the, the thing to do, usually I do this explanation when we're um, after the glaze is on, but since somebody asked, that person <laughs> um, I'll, I'll go ahead and show. So here we have the slip. Tomorrow we'll put on the glaze. And that's the time when you can make your designs. So when you're finished with that, you take off the tape and you let it sit and dry. And sometimes when the slip has been sitting a while and it's dry, you're going to want to take some water bottles before you even put on the, the glaze and just kind of spritz it a little bit and then you put the glaze on and um, when you get to the point in places where it seems to want to, to crack then you will um, go ahead and spritz that area with the water bottle. Or if it's really, really tight and you've got some lines like say this part here hasn't been done yet but everything else you just take a sponge and go like that. That way, there's no chance of any of the other lines getting glazed into them. You'll, when we do it tomorrow, it'll make more sense.